We'll turn back to one of our top stories now. That's a New York federal courtroom finding Donald Trump liable of sexually abusing advice columnist E. Jean Carroll in the mid-1990s, a ruling that is, of course, dominating the papers today. Our press reviewer, Dipti Kalaron, is here to take a closer look. The Washington Post today, Aaron, let's have a look here. Uh, jury finds Trump abused, defamed Carroll. Uh, the New York Civil Court awarded E. Jean Carroll $5 million in damages after finding Donald Trump liable, because this is a civil court, not guilty, uh, for defaming and sexually abusing her. The charge of sexual abuse was actually lowered from the initial uh, charge of rape requested by uh, prosecutors. It's also on the front page of some of the British papers today. The Daily Mail here wonders if this is the end of Donald Trump's new bid to be president. Indeed, there, there are a lot of questions about how much weight this ruling will have on his uh, presidential hopes uh, ahead of 2024 presidential elections. Well, uh, legally, it would have no bearing on his eligibility to run for election next year. The editors of the Wall Street Journal uh, say such a ruling should matter, but they fear that in the, quote, debased and polarized American politics of 2023, it may just not matter at all. Now, Dipti, the political cartoonists have also been furiously etching their reactions to. What have you found? Yeah, a lot of uh, humorous responses, as you can imagine, to this ruling. Uh, the uh, cartoonists always love an opportunity to take a dig at Donald Trump. So uh, this cartoonist here, Randy Bish, uh, sees a new elephant in the room. This elephant here wearing a T-shirt saying, I'm with the guy found liable of sexual abuse. Uh, obviously, looking at what it means for the Republican Party going ahead. Uh, there's also uh, this one here. You can always uh, uh, focus on the positives. At least it was sexual assault and not rape. That's what uh, Matt Davies, the Newsday's cartoonist, says rather uh, sarcastically. And you have this one here from Michael Diado, the Washington Post's uh, cartoonist, who sees uh, a, a new slogan, liable for sexual assault, not quite as catchy as Donald Trump's Make America Great Again. Indeed. We'll wait and see how Republicans uh, react to that in the coming days. All right, Dipti, we'll change gears now. Here in France, Liberation is focusing on the government's decision uh, to ban far-right demonstrations uh, after criticisms over the weekend rally of some 600 neo-Nazis in central Paris. Yeah, those neo-Nazis were dressed uh, in black. They rallied in the French capital on the weekend in an authorized protest, and it was in direct contrast to uh, the directives given to uh, uh, anti-pension reforms protesters who've been bagging their pots and pans uh, in protest of Emmanuel Macron re in recent times, which was uh, which was uh, severely restricted, which has now been severely restricted by authorities. After much criticism, Liberation says that under pressure, uh, the Interior Minister uh, Interior Ministry has now moved to ban these types of far-right neo-Nazi uh, demonstrations, notably because protesters were, were clad in black uniforms, but also because they were wearing face masks, which directly contravenes rules about face coverings in public in France, and bearing the, the Celtic cross, which is often a symbol associated with white supremacy groups. Uh, Liberation's editor uh, sort of slamming uh, the, 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 the audacity of far-right leader Marine Le Pen to uh, condemn these far-right protests in what Liberation calls a sort of laughable turn of hypocrisy in this whole scandal. Indeed. All right. We'll, we'll change gears uh, again, Dipti, and talk about the Madrid Tennis Open, which just wrapped up in a storm of controversy about sexism. Tell us more. It did indeed, Erin. Uh, um, after Victoria Azarenka and Beatrice Haddad Maya beat American pair Jessica Pagula and Coco Goff in the women's doubles final in Madrid uh, at the Madrid Open, uh, no mic was made available for the four players to give their their speeches, as is customary for most tennis tournaments. Uh, they've since taken to social media and the press in general to talk about uh, why this happened. Um, it's making some of the papers today, uh, and really to express their anger about what they see as having been silenced. There's no explanation why this was the case, but the Times of London speculates that maybe it was retaliation for critical comments that some of the players had made about player gender equality. Now, uh, the uh, now I News explains that this uh, comes after um, sort of scandal upon scandal during the Madrid Open. Organizers had earlier come under fire for making ball girls wear. Um, crop tops and pleated skirts, which some saw as uh, over-the-top sexist. There was also then the icing on the cake, pardon the pun, it was cake gate. Uh, three people brought out a 
three-tier birthday cake for Carlos Alcaraz, who won the men's final, the men's singles final of the Madrid Open and celebrated his birthday on May the 5th. Um, the women's uh, singles finalist, uh, the women's singles winner, rather, Ariana Sabalenko, Sabalenka, uh, who won the women's singles final and also celebrated her birthday on the same day, uh, merely got a single-tier cake that was sort of handed to her unceremoniously in the locker room, so many seeing that as um, a glaring double standards. Given the outrage and backlash, this writer for iNews says, if Madrid uh, Open organizers were hoping to silence women, well, then they failed terribly at that. It's a, a bizarre way to discriminate uh, amongst the genders. All right, well, at least we're talking about it. Uh, all right, Dipti, we'll end on another woman, Brazil's iconic rock star, Rita Lee, who's just passed away at the age of 75. Yeah, she's making the front page of Folha de Sao Paulo, a Brazilian paper there. Uh, she was known as Brazil's queen of rock. Rita Lee's career spanned uh, some four decades there in her uh, album Fruto Proibido, F Forbidden Fruit, is considered a great classic of, music, of Brazilian music. She was also the main singer-songwriter in the Tropicalia movement, which emerged in the 1960s in protest to restrictions placed on the arts and censorship uh, during the then military dictatorship in Brazil. Uh, Foy de Sao Paulo today paying tribute to Rita Lee, saying she was in this headline, essentially that she was like a Martian who was just simply out of this world. Aaron. All right, Dipti Laurent with the press review. Thank you very much.